in today's video we're going to be taking a look here at the upcoming pattern where we do have relentless storms heading towards the northwestern united states some snowfall opportunities in the east as well models aren't really picking up on it yet but there is a couple of situations that i'm going to point out to you guys where if we do see some movement we could be very very close to some of our first snowfall in the east we also have some long range cold on the way that we're going to go over today before we get into things, be sure to check out Prestige Weather in the description and pinned comment down below. We do have a couple of early access videos up and available there today. That's going to be the third winter forecast, the snowfall forecast compared to normal, and also when to expect your first snowfall. All of those are available for only $5 a month in the description and pinned comment down below, so be sure to check it out today. Let's dive into things, and by the time we're reaching this afternoon here on Sunday, November 5th, you can see that there is already kind of our first storm here for the Northwest. We do see some snowfall here in Idaho and Montana and Wyoming, so kind of this corridor here where we're seeing some snowfall taking place. Rainfall mostly for the coast and the lower elevation areas, and this is actually a pretty far-stretching storm here overall, bringing impacts to many different areas. By the time we're taking a look at tomorrow afternoon, we already have storm number two very, very quickly already here. So we see a 998 millibar low pressure center coming on shore to Washington State in Oregon. And this is bringing snowfall for both the Cascades here in Washington and Oregon and the Rockies there in Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. Also, at the same time, we have a pretty intense storm up here for southern Canada, and this is bringing impacts to the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes here, mostly in the form of rainfall on the United States side of things, but Canada getting a pretty heavy snowstorm here, as you can see, as a result of that storm. Let's go ahead and move towards Tuesday afternoon on November 7th. As you can see, we do have a 996 millibar low pressure center there. Now, just to the north of the state of Maine there, and we are seeing some rainfall for New York, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine as a result of that. We're kind of getting messy out west. As you can see, there's just precipitation kind of spread all over the place. We have snowfall going on for the Cascades and a lot of the Rockies now for Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, even Idaho, and potentially, or even Utah better yet, and then even potentially in Colorado, a little bit of that going on. We do see a 1,006 millibar low pressure center here, bringing a pretty mixed storm to North Dakota and northern Minnesota, where there's some snowfall, some sleet, and some ice. This would be a pretty messy storm if that does come to uh, end up be that way. Let's see by Wednesday, November 8th, a little bit quieter out west, finally seeing a little bit of uh, things kind of cooling off. We do see that there is a couple of snow showers around for the Rockies, but those shouldn't be too impactful. Uh, we do have a, kind of the remnants of that storm up here for the upper Midwest and Great Lakes as well as the Ohio Valley, but mostly going to be showery activity in here. Nothing too consistent or persistent at all. Uh, there is a little bit of snowfall perhaps for the upper peninsula of Michigan in through areas of Wisconsin and even a little bit of the lower peninsula of Michigan seeing some snowfall showers there on Wednesday, November 8th. By Thursday, November 9th here, we do get some snowfall here for Colorado, up into Wyoming, and then even down for New Mexico as well there in those mountainous areas. And that does look pretty persistent and pretty heavy, I will say, for Thursday, November 9th. And we do see actually some heavier rainfall down here to the south. Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, all kind of seeing some heavier showers, maybe even thunderstorms as a result of all of this activity. By the time we're reaching Friday, a lot of this takes aim at the southeast where we have thunderstorms and showers alike all the way from Louisiana. And if you take that towards the northeast, we can see it all the way up into Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and portions of southern New York. For Saturday the 11th here, we can see again the southeast getting the brunt of this. So we can see areas along Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida seeing some showery and some thunderstorm activity there. Let's keep going towards Sunday on November 12th here. And what we see is that a lot of this is dying down. There is some showers left over, but we see a lot less activity now. And we get another storm moving on shore here to the northwest. This time it's a 1,003 millibar low pressure center. We do see some pretty heavy snowfall for Northern California there, areas in the Cascades of Oregon and Washington as well. And then even up in British Columbia, seeing some pretty heavy snowfall as a result of this system. Also note the jet stream here. We have a pretty strong ridge over the west and then a pretty decent trough here. 
uh, where the cold air is kind of moving like this. So the southeast is kind of left out, and we probably actually have a flow something like this, I would imagine. Um, that would be probably my guess. So the southeast trying to hold on to some of that warmth. The cold, cold air mostly exclusive for the northeast and the north central states. Pretty interesting jet stream pattern we find ourselves in. Then for Monday, this is when I really think we could connect on a snowstorm. The first one is going to be sometime between the 10th and 11th, by the way. I forgot to mention that. But we have precipitation down here, cold rapidly moving in. And if we see this kind of combine a little bit more, I would not be surprised if we start to get some sort of signs of potential snowfall here in the northeast corner of the states. The second opportunity comes here as this trough becomes a little bit more uh, vertical, I would say. So we have a little bit of a flow up the coast here. I'll point an arrow so we know the direction all this is heading in. Well, once it stops buffering, I'll draw an arrow. Here we go. So something like this is what we're seeing. And then we get this kind of storminess down here where, the, where a low pressure system could develop. Now, if we get a low kind of in this area, moving, let's say, like this, I would not be surprised if there is some potential snowfall in this corridor here. To some extent, it might be in the form of showers. Of course, it might not happen at all. I'm just talking about a possibility and when we have this level of cold air up and down the east coast, especially for the mid-Atlantic and northeast, and then we have low pressure and storminess in the area, you have to imagine there's at least some possibility of this coming together. So I want to mention that we could see this trend north, we could see this trend south. It's still the very long range, but there is just potential shots at snowfall over the course of the next 10 days that are worth mentioning. Now we have yet another storm for the northwestern United States, this time California and Nevada. Oregon and maybe a little bit of Idaho here and then up through Washington and British Columbia we're seeing snowfall along those Cascade Mountains there for Monday into Tuesday and then as we move on towards the very end of the model run on Tuesday evening here again that's going to be the 14th we get heavy snowfall up and down the northwest as we get about storm number five perhaps and this is going to be for Northern California Oregon and Washington where we're seeing heavier snowfall there for those mountainous areas so clearly the totals are going to be crazy let's just dive into some of this activity we can see that as far as precipitation is concerned this northwestern corner is certainly receiving the most in the entire nation in second place would be southern Texas where we're seeing quite a bit of activity but mostly it's this northwest corner that we're watching especially because we have so much activity moving into that region total snowfall here no surprise that we're getting extremely heavy totals out west up and down the rockies the sierra nevadas and the cascades some snow shower and snowflake opportunities here for the upper midwest and great lakes as well as the northeast but really the main story is out west here where the grays is a dusting if anything blues are two to six inches purples are six to ten pinks are ten to twenty there and then your pastel blues are twenty to thirty and then your pastel purples within those pastel blues are going to be 30 inches plus. And we are seeing some of that for those Cascades. And then those mountainous west areas in British Columbia. I don't know if those are considered still the Cascades or if that's a different mountain range. But regardless, very heavy totals here over British Columbia. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the temperature pattern. We do see that we have a cooler pattern still trying to hold on. We get a warm up here for the 7th, uh, but a pretty fast turnaround as we do get a cold air mass moving at least into the northeast and portions of the great lakes but as far as the areas in the southeast we do have a very strong push from this warm air and that is going to help us to hold on to some of this warmth at least through the midweek here as we're taking a look at wednesday the 8th we can see that that cold finally pushes it down to the southeast and there it's still holding on by the time we're reaching after the weekend so sunday monday time frame but right when we're reaching right around tuesday we do see that it reaches the entire eastern seaboard and this is actually extremely potent we're seeing temperatures that are about 10 to 15 degrees below normal here in these greens so by the time we're reaching midweek kind of next week that is when we could be looking at some more potent cold in the east but the important thing to note is that we do have a negative pna that stands for pacific north american oscillation and that is probably going to help to return the warm air here to the east. Now, let's take a look here at this long range temperature pattern because I think this is pretty interesting. We do see that cool down here for that midweek time frame, followed by a brief warm up, but we get more cold air here all the way from late November into early December. And really, it just sticks around through the model run, as you can see, with some signs of warmer air out west, which will help me to 
kind of feel more confident and more sustained cold in the east here. But this gets us all the way through the 15th through the 20th of December. So this is a very long range outlook. And certainly more cold in the east over the next month or so seems to be more likely than not. So that is what we're paying attention to. But we'll keep you guys up to date with this as we do upload every single day. So be sure to subscribe for daily weather uploads just like this one. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.